Today we're going to answer the question, how hard is the game Candy Crush? It turns out it's NP complete. Thanks for watching! Just kidding. In this video, we're going to first go over the rules of the game, then define the Candy Crush problem. Once we have that, we will show that the Candy Crush problem is in NP, and that the Candy Crush problem is NP hard. First, the rules. Candy Crush is played on a grid. Let the dimensions of the grid be W by H. Each square on the grid is filled with one of six different colored candies. A player may swap two candies in neighboring squares. A neighboring square is defined to be a square that shares an edge on the top, bottom, left, or right. Here's an example. As you saw, when a player forms a chain of three identical candies or more, the identical candies are deleted and new ones fall from above and take their place. For simplicity, we will take the player's final score to be equal to the number of chains deleted. Now we can define the Candy Crush problem. Given a game board with a known initial configuration and a number k representing the number of swaps we are allowed in the game, we ask can we achieve a score s. For the sake of our proof, we will assume that we are playing an offline version of Candy Crush, so we know the sequence of new candies that will fall after we have cleared parts of our board. Now we are ready to begin our proof. The first step is to show that the Candy Crush problem is an NP. This is relatively straightforward because given a sequence of moves, we can just play the game and then check if the final score is large enough. Playing each move takes constant time, and comparing the final score can be done digit by digit in O of log n time. That means, overall, we can check the Candy Crush problem in polynomial time. Hence, the Candy Crush problem is in NP. Now it is time to show that Candy Crush is NP hard. We will do this by reducing from 3SAT. We will introduce a series of gadgets that will allow us to convert any 3SAT instance into an instance of Candy Crush. The first gadget is what we will call the neutral background. We form the neutral background with alternating colored candies on the rows and columns so that the player cannot score any points on the neutral background. Without loss of generality, we will use red, orange, blue, and purple candies. Suppose we want to insert three green candies. We will open up spots by shifting down columns of the neutral background from each position we want to insert a green candy. For ease of notation, we will denote the neutral background with this grid of dots. Next we introduce our true and false boolean gadgets. We will make the rest of the gadgets from a single color candy. Without loss of generality, let's choose green. Both the true and false gadgets have the same form. To indicate true, we make this swap. The false gadget looks the same, except to indicate false, we make this swap. These are our boolean gadgets. We now pair them with variable gadgets to simulate variable assignment. Not x looks like this. Notice the slot marked out. If we place not x on top of our boolean gadget and set the boolean gadget equal to false, the middle column will fall three spots, causing a single row to be cleared, and then the out slot will contain a green candy. Otherwise, the out slot does not contain a green candy. Our positive x variable gadget behaves in a similar fashion, except that the out slot contains a green candy, if and only if the boolean gadget was set to true. Our next gadget is what we will call the wire, which allows us to change the position and height of the out position. Here is an example of one such wire. Consider what happens if we connect an out to the bottom left corner of this wire. Nothing will happen if that first out did not contain a green candy. However, if it did, then 
the out position in the wire will also contain a green candy. Wires can take on many shapes and forms depending on where you want to transmit the green signal. Now we will show how to represent clauses. We will loosely define a clause gadget to be anything such that the fourth column drops only on a satisfying assignment. This can be more easily explained through an example. Consider the clause not x1 or x2. Here is a corresponding clause gadget that satisfies the property that only on a satisfying condition does the fourth column drop. Some tricks to making the clause gadget include putting the variable that should be true below the one that should be false so that when the one below is satisfied, the fourth column can drop, but when the one above is satisfied, the fourth column will not drop. Here we put not x1 below x1. The subsequent variables follow the same pattern, except we have to remember to shift the first two columns of each subsequent variable up by one row in order to account for what happens in the variables below. Clause gadgets receive signals from the variable assignment gadgets via wires. For instance, the out slot from the not x variable assignment gadget will be connected via a wire to the spot labeled not x on this clause gadget. We also introduce an anti-cheating gadget, which involves stacking capital N copies of this form onto the fourth column of the clause gadget. Then when a clause is satisfied, the player gets N extra points. At the end of the day, we are going to pass the board we create as an input into Candy Crush along with a score S. If S is too low, then it is possible that it is achievable by a means other than setting the variables to their proper satisfying assignments. Therefore, we can set capital N to be something obscenely large, like the length of the input cubed, and then we can set S to be the maximum score achievable. Then the only way of achieving the score S is by inputting a satisfying assignment for the variables. The player would not be able to achieve the score S by connecting random groups of three in the middle of the board. Now we have all the tools we need for the reduction. Suppose we are given a formula phi with n variables and m clauses. We use the gadgets to construct an equivalent game board. For each variable, we create a variable assignment gadget consisting of a positive variable and a negative variable on top of a Boolean gadget. Since we have n variables, we create n of these variable assignment gadgets. We can place all these side by side and add in some padding using neutral background and wires to ensure that all of the variables have an out on the right side. We also have our M clauses. Line them up diagonally from top left to bottom right as shown. This way it is easy to make wire connections without passing any wires over the clauses. Finally, use wires to connect variables to their clauses. Note that a wire can be used to amplify the number of out slots for a single variable. So if a variable is used in more than one clause, this still works. Now for the runtime analysis. Recognizing the proper gadget for a specific element in the expression takes constant time. The main concern is filling in the board, but this board has width O of n plus m and height O of a polynomial function of n plus m. Therefore, we can construct it in polynomial time. Now we can pass this game board into Candy Crush with k, the number of moves, being set equal to n, the number of variables, and s set equal to the maximum score achievable. Candy Crush outputs 1 if and only if phi is satisfiable, so 3sat reduces to Candy Crush in polynomial time. Therefore, Candy Crush is NP hard. In conclusion, we have shown that the Candy Crush problem is an NP and that the Candy Crush problem is NP hard. Together, these imply that Candy Crush is NP complete. As they say in Rome, quoterat demonstrandum.